Amen. Amen. Welcome to Grace and welcome to our online people. We just want to worship God and give him the glory due his name. Amen. Amen. You know, I was just thinking about a song that said, before the angels ever sang one song, he was on his throne. He was on his throne. Wow, that's powerful. God is in control. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's worship together. Let's stand together. of all creation of water earth and sky the heavens are your tabernacle glory to the Lord on high God of wonders beyond our galaxy you are holy Holy, the universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy, Lord of heaven and earth. Lord of heaven and earth. Early in the morning, early in the morning, we will celebrate the light. When I stumble in the darkness, I will call your name by night. God of wonders beyond our galaxy, you are holy, holy, the universe declares your majesty, you are holy, holy. Lord of heaven, Lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. Lord, reveal your heart to me. You are holy, holy. The universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy. God of wonders beyond our galaxy. You are holy, holy, the universe declares your majesty, you are holy, holy, Lord of heaven and earth, Lord. We give him glory. Hallelujah. You know, there's been a lot of talk lately about UFOs. But I just want you to know that the Lord is king over all the universe. And whatever is in the universe is his. And power 
Amen. Every dominion, every throne belongs to God. No matter where it is, on what planet it is, whatever kind of creature it is, <laughs> it's under his rule and dominion. Amen. <laughs> Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name, yeah. Blessed be your name, though I walk through the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me, when the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering, with this pain in the offering. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will lift it up. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. One more time. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Yeah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. You give and take away. You give and take away. You give and take away, my heart will choose to say, blessed be your name. You give and take away, give and take away, you give and take away, my heart will choose to say, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. One more time. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Name. Amen. Praise God. Blessed be his name. No matter what's going on in our lives, we praise him. Amen. All the time. All the time. Amen. Give him praise all the time because God is good and he is worthy of our praise all the time. Amen. God is great, Chelsea. Amen. God is great all the time. Has God done anything for you this week? Amen. 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 He All is right, so amen. good. He is so awesome to us. <sighs> good morning, Grace Community Church. It's so glad to see everybody here. And I was thinking I was supposed to be over here somewhere. <laughs> you know, I keep forgetting where my footing is. But I'm supposed to be over here somewhere. Oh, this yeah. way today. Okay. All right. Well, look. Welcome to our guest this morning, our online guest. We're so glad that you are joining us this morning. Uh, we are enjoying praise and worship thus far. Amen. Amen. It is awesome this morning. I can't wait to continue yes. in praise and worship. 
we have something coming up, y'all, that we didn't ha get to have last year as a result of COVID, Ooh. our barbecue and soul. Right. Just wanted to mention that to everyone. So we're needing lots of volunteers yeah. because we're going to do this on May the 15th. And normally we have a longer run uh, to, to plan, but we're putting this together and we're going to need all hands on deck. Right. So there are some sign-up sheets out there. Make sure you sign up for something before yeah. you go. And online guests, if you want to come be a part of it, oh, come, on. Come, on, come on. The more, the merrier. Yeah. We always have an awesome time of food, fellowship, fun, yeah. and worship. Amen. Man. All right. So let's get back to praise and worship. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Ken. And one thing he didn't mention, that it, the barbecue is in the name, all right? Barbecue. Did you all hear that, Memphis? All right, so, uh, you know, you know, say no more. Barbecue and blues. Woo! We're going to have the Jason Foray band in here. And, man, they play that at B.B. King's, and you don't want to miss it. So we're going to be announcing it, and you're going to see things online. So just make sure you come. Everything is free. We're going to have prizes. It is going to be awesome. It's a great day to bring your kids out and sit on the lawn. And it's just, it's May. It's not going to be too hot. What have you got to lose? <laughs> Amen. God is so good, isn't he? Praise God. He is great. I like what Chelsea said. God is great. Thank you, Lord. You know, and he called Peter. Well, Peter asked if he could come out on the water because he wanted to be with Jesus during that time. He saw him when they were all the disciples were afraid. And Peter said, if it's you, Lord, let me come out on the water. The deep water with the storm and the wind I still want to come out and Jesus said come on and he stepped out of the boat and he was walking on water Wow can you imagine but I don't know what happened to Peter that made him sink but he may have gotten afraid from the wind he may have just realized I'm walking on water and it just kind of freaked him out you know sometimes things will happen in our life where God will just overwhelm us with his power and his grace. But what we need to do is look to him. Amen. Look to his power. Call me out upon the waters, the great unknown, the feet may fail. And there I find you in the mist. Of oceans deep, and my faith will stand. I will call upon your name. Keep my eyes above the waves. When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace. Cause I am yours And you are mine Oh You are mine Oh abounds in deepest waters your sovereign hand will be my God where fear surrounds and fear abounds you never fail and you won't start now I will call upon your name and keep my eyes above the way when oceans rise my soul will rest in your embrace cause I am yours and you are mine oh
Spirit, lead me when my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me when my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me when my trust is without borders, and me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. My Savior. I will call upon your name and keep my eyes above the way. When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace, cause I am yours, and you are mine. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. And that's just comforting to know that I am yours, and you are mine. Lord, because he paid such a price. He wants all of us. He wants us to surrender our hearts and our everything we have to him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You were the light of the world before time began, Lord. And you stepped out of darkness and opened my eyes to let me see. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely. All together worthy, all together wonderful to me. The King of all days. King of all days, you're so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Yes. Humbly you came to the earth you created, all for love's sake became poor. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. 
You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. To see my sin upon that cross, I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin. Upon that cross, I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. One more time. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Amen, amen, amen. Just praise him, just praise him. He's so worthy. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Man, I hope you hope you got a good got a good feel of it, good feel. I mean, got filled up with it. Y'all, this we're in what we call the Last Supper, the last time that Jesus had with his disciples. And so he gets up at this supper and does the unthinkable. Jesus, the Son of God gets up and washes the disciples' feet. He does what only a lowly slave would do. And y'all, he spent three years of his life with this people. And the the world has never seen anything like him. And the world hadn't seen anything like him since then. So in John 13, 5, it says he, he poured water into a basin. And then he began to wash his disciples' feet and drying them with the towel that he had around them. Now, we're in this series uh, called One Love. Last week, we looked at, you know, who we are. This week, we're looking at why we are here. And, and then next week, we'll look at, you know, where we're going. But, uh, y'all, Jesus is giving them some last-minute instructions. Y'all, he's telling, in this whole section of scripture he's telling them some extremely important things that he wants them to get you know and he's he's demonstrating to them what he wants their life to be like and so as presenting himself as the lowliest of all servants and he's telling he's told them numerous times he didn't come to be served but to serve you know, so uh, by, by this time, they know who he is. Everybody in Jerusalem is talking about him. Everybody know, knows he's an, a person of extreme power and influence. But instead of exercising his power and, in, in, and authority, he takes the opportunity to demonstrate something to his disciples about what it means to be a true servant. And he's about to go through the most grueling, agonizing death that you can imagine and instead of taking care of his own needs 
Y'all, he's thinking about them. He's thinking about others. He's thinking about us. And he's telling them he's about to leave them. And they're deeply troubled that he's leaving them. But he tells them, don't worry, because he's coming to them in the person of the Holy Spirit. And so he goes into a pretty good little discussion about that. And we won't get into all that. But in John 14, 18, he says, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. So he's telling them about the Holy Spirit coming to live in them. Yes. And Jesus identifies with the Holy Spirit. The Father identifies with the Holy Spirit. And because God eternally exists as three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And He's coming to indwell them yes. in the person of the Holy Spirit. And all three of them are identified there in that process. Yes. But so he's, he's going to be in them. He's telling them that. So then after elaborating a little more about the Holy Spirit, he tells them he's leaving them. He describes his purpose for them in a way that would be very familiar to them. He's going to teach them about something that, or give them a visual, uh, a visual story about something that they would have recognized living in that part of the world and that's making wine and growing grapes. And so, and he's using this when, remember, he's telling them the Holy Spirit is coming. And he's teaching them about uh, this, this principle of the, the, the vine and the branches. And so he's telling them why they are here on this earth. And he's telling us why we are here. And he paints a picture for him about a, a vineyard. So before we read the scripture, y'all, it's, it's one of those things that you need to read over and over and over to kind of grasp it. Do you, you ever uh, be involved in like a texting conversation with somebody and you want to make sure you get the words just exactly right? And, and you know, it's real. It's a real important discussion. It means a lot to you. And you read it over several times and and you, you go back and reread it to make sure nothing got misconstrued or something like that. Well, it, it's kind of like this with this scripture. I would encourage you to read it a whole lot. We're only going to read it once. But read it a whole bunch. Meditate on it this week and the things that we're going to talk about. Because this is all important. It's crucial to get living of the Christian life. If we're going to get it, here's where we get it. So let's read together in John 15, 1 through 9. He, so he says, I am the true vine. My father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. And while every fruit that does bear, every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes it so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It, it must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. That if you do not remain in me, you're like a branch that is thrown away and withers, such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burn. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Yeah. This, is my this is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. So let's keep... Let's, Keep these three things in mind as we're looking at Jesus is the vine. Y'all, he is absolutely necessary. He said, I am the, he, remember he said, I am the true vine. Yeah. And then there's a whole lot of vines out there that aren't true vines. Yeah. But there's only one vine that the Father is working through. Yeah. And that vine connects us to the gardener, to his Father. So, so, uh, and then his father is the gardener. That's, he's absolutely necessary. You know, it's his vineyard. We're just living in it. He planted the vineyard. He owns the vineyard. He can do whatever he wants. He can plow it up and start all over if he wants to. 
He is his father as the gardener. We are the branches. Not absolutely necessary, but extremely important to God. The father can get along without you and me just fine. He could he could do it without the vineyard, but the branches are extremely important to him. He would do anything for them. Y'all, there's nothing that the Father wouldn't do for the branches. That's us. There's nothing, y'all. He, he demonstrated that by sending His own Son. He, the Bible says if He wouldn't withhold His own Son from Him, wouldn't He do anything else for us? Of course He would. So, now let's look together. Okay, number one. The Father is looking for fruit. That's what He's doing. He's... He's about looking for a fruit. The fruit the Father's looking for is for us to become more like His Son, Jesus Christ. That's what we're here on this earth to do. And in the process of that, we do what He did and we influence others for good. Yeah. Now look what He says. He, in verse 2 it says, He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. And while every branch that does bear fruit, He prunes so that He... It will even be more fruitful. Well, first of all, congratulations, you didn't get cut off. (laughs) Second, he's going to start cutting on you. (laughs) Now he's going to start snipping off things that are holding you back from bearing fruit. Now he's going to begin to prune in our lives and begin to remove stuff. And it is, it's a good thing. Do you know what's... You know, do you know what's going to make you happy is getting rid of those things that He wants to get rid of. Amen. The things that drag your life down. And, and then in the process, bring pain and suffering to yourself and those that you love, that you're connected with. So it's all for good. And in the process of that, y'all, He's going to raise your life up and you're going to find an abundant, rich life that you never knew was possible. And, and, you know, at, at times it's going to be painful. You know, it's just, it's just part of this life. You know, life is not all easy, y'all. It hurts sometimes. But the difference is when your Father in heaven is orchestrating and holding it together and keeping a, a balance on it and keeping it in check so that you don't get more than you can bear, always... And He's always doing it for our good, y'all. He promised to work everything for our good. Look at Romans 8, 28 and 29. A very familiar passage, but we forget about part of this, I think. In, in 8, 28 it says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. And then He tells us what that purpose is. For, for those God knew, foreknew, He also predestined, To be conformed to the image of His Son. So the purpose that God has us here on this earth for. When when we've come into His family. Is to work everything everything into His plan. To make us more like His Son Jesus Christ. And in the process of that. You're going to lose your life. But you're going to find life. And find a life you never dreamed was possible. You're going, to be, you're going to be, sometimes you're going to pinch yourself and say, can this really be real? You know, when, and, and sometimes right in the middle when things are going crazy on the outside, and yet you're rock steady on the inside, just breezing right through it with Him because He's bearing you up. And it's, it's an amazing thing. Jesus did more good than anyone in the history of the world. Y'all, He wants to reproduce in and through us like that. Y'all, He wants us to be walking testimonies of Jesus Christ and the difference that He makes in a life through us toward other people. Y'all, He wants our lives to be all about that unselfish life. And, and we're just the opposite of that, just about. I am. I find myself. He says, if you, do, if you do not remain in me, you're like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. Just, he's saying, just let that be a lesson to us. Make sure we don't turn away from him. You know, this is not some optional course. 
You know, that we can kind of take it or leave it. You know, like this is, this is that deeper Christian life. And, you know, I'm, I'm really too busy for that and I don't have time for that. I've got my, you know, I've got my career going I'm, and all this other stuff. I'm, you know, no, y'all, this is the life. Yeah. This is it. There is no plan B. All of everything that God wants to do on this earth, He wants to do it through you and me. God's not going to do for us. He's going to do in us and through us. You are the hope of the world. Y'all, humanly speaking, it's Him through you. Y'all, we want to sit back and pray, God, please take care of this and all. Everything, every problem that this world has could be taken care of through God's people just living for Him. Everything. I can't think of anything that can't be. I'm sure there's something. But, uh, y'all, I know, uh, you know, we, can, we can't just take this part and we'll get to that later. This, this is the Christian life. Number three. Now, this is the good stuff. But it means nothing without the other stuff. Y'all, His life in us opens the door to receive. His life in us Opens the door to receive. Yes. This is the part we want to hear. And this is what God wants for us. He says, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Yeah. Now that comes from what we've already been talking about. You know, he, say, he says these words. Now this, these are... These are personal words, different word than you see most of the time when it says word in the Bible. These are personal words. This is an ongoing conversation between you and Jesus as you live your life out. See, when his unselfish life is flowing through us and we are walking with him, abiding in him, aware of his presence, conscious of who he is in our life, day in and day out, and whatever we're doing, He's not far from us. He's not far from our thoughts. We are filtering all that we do through the mindset of being in His presence. Because you are in His presence. He lives, He came to live in you, to take up residence in you, to share this life with you. He wants to live His life through you. Yeah. Now look, y'all. When his unlife, when his unselfish life is flowing through us, when we are hooked on his presence, y'all, we think about him all the time. We think about him night and day. Y'all, we have a continual prayer conversation with him. Y'all, this does, it's, I'm not saying it'll happen overnight. But this is a growing process. As we learn to walk with Jesus. In other words, you can say every year that you're alive on this planet that this year is better than last year. I don't care what happened this year. When you do it with Him. When you do life with Jesus Christ and walk through it with Him, life gets better and better and better. Hey, here's the good news. It's going to get better and better for all of eternity. C.S. Lewis described heaven is like a place where every day is better than the, than the day before and forever and ever and ever and ever. Can you imagine that? That's what we're bound for. We're going to talk about that next week. Y'all, every, everything is going to get better and better. Now, when we start to act like Jesus, y'all, when we pray a prayer and we're with that sensitive to Him and we pray a prayer, we're basically just praying back to Him His will for us. See, we're basically just praying back his, his words to Him because He's already infused us. See, we're already thinking and acting like and delighting in His will, allowing His unselfish life to live in us. That's the Christian life, y'all. It's not about you don't smoke, you don't drink, and you don't go with girls that do, you know. <laughs> Uh, or chew or whatever that old that old saying that 
You know, I don't, I don't smoke and I don't chew and I don't go with girls that do or something, something like that. Uh, but y'all, when we're, when we, when we are in sync with Him, uh, that's terrible. <laughs> y'all, when we're, when we're in sync with Him, y'all, He's, we're hearing Him. We, we've left that old selfish life behind. Where everything is about me, 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 me. What I want. Well, that's not what I want. Who cares what you want? You know, this is what Jesus wants. Oh, we, he, he, see, he wants far more. We want less than he wants for us. He wants to give us an abundant, rich, a miraculous life. And we want dollar store trinkets. Oh, let's say you got a 12 year old and some filthy wrench uncle of yours that you didn't know you had. And, and uh, he, he comes and, you know, he visits the house and he tells your 12 year old son that he can have the latest, greatest iPhone 12 or 13 or 14 or 15, whatever, whatever it's up to now. I, I think mine's an iPhone 2 or something like that. But uh, he, he promises, you know what, you know, at a kid that age, man, a phone is the greatest thing in the world, you know, and there. And he and then he gives him a choice between that and he says, you know, I have this bank account that you can have Everything you need. And he says, everything you need for the rest of your life. He's going to take care of your medical bills, your dental bills, your college tuition. I mean, he's going to take care of all of your needs. Everything that you need. And you're over there, you're praying. You're praying, God, help him, help him take the bank account. Oh, son, get, get the bank account. But the kid chooses the iPhone. Yeah. And you're thinking, oh, no, you had it made. And, you know, that's that's exactly what we're doing with this life. We are we're like the kid. We want the things that don't matter. And they're blinding our eyes. You know, we don't see it. We're not seeing it's right there in front of us. Jesus said, seeing they'll see and hearing that they, they won't see it and hear it and they won't hear it. See, we're thoroughly selfish to the core. Now, I'm addicted to me. You're addicted to you. I love me. You love you. You get two people in a, like that, and man, you're going to have conflict. I serve me. You serve you. See, we're, we're living totally different. We need a 12-step program to be addicted to us. We really do. We do. Those, those steps work, by the way. They really do. They're all biblical. Uh, James 4.3 says, look, look what happens. See, he says, when we ask, he says, even when you ask, he's, he's just told them, you, you don't get stuff because you don't ask for it. And he says, even when you ask, you don't get it because, <clears throat> because your motives are wrong. You want only what, you, that what will give you pleasure. You want what pleases you. And that's a dead end trap, y'all. There's not enough stuff on this planet to please you. There's there's not enough drugs on this planet. There's not enough sex. There's not enough money. There's not enough power in the world. All of those things. There's not enough of it on this planet to please any one person. It's It's a death trap. So he says, you, 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 your, your motives are all wrong. You want it only what will give you pleasure. Now look at this one, John, Jeremiah 17, 9. The human heart is the most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. Who really knows how bad it is? Y'all, that's us. That's why we need to be saved. We need to be saved from us. You know, the problem is not out there. It's in here. You know, but but see, that's why we need saved. That's why he came to free us, to give us life, 
to give us a, a, a glorious life and set us free from that. And then, <clears throat> y'all, when you love, see, you, you get that back. When you become the most loving person, you become the most loved person. And number four and last, fruit makes God happy. He wants to see that, y'all. He wants so much better for us than, he, than we want for ourselves. He says, this is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Yeah. You know, God created this world and this, this, the universe and everything in it. Y'all, all those millions and millions and millions and millions of stars, they can't count them even the ones in the, as far as they can see. There's so many of them, they can't count them all. Y'all, and, but you know what about those stars? They're just inanimate objects. They bring Him glory for sure. That He created all that. But what really brings Him glory is the, the things He made that are made in His image that have a free will. That's us. He said, it's to the Father's glory that you bear much fruit. See, when people turn from self and quit living for self and start to live that selfless life that Jesus Christ commanded and brought and made possible for us. Oh, man, that's when that's when life starts. He says that the, this is to my father's glory. This is what gives him glory when he can point out to he can point our life out to people. He can he can bring our, us to their minds and say, man, if you want a better life, live like him or her. Y'all, and, and sometimes it might involve, you know, you showing his glory during hard times. Sometimes it involves you showing his glory and staying faithful when he pours out riches on you. You know, uh, Chuck Swindoll said for for every, I think it was every thousand people who can stay faithful during hard times. One can stay faithful during prosperous, prosperous times. Tendency is to forget him. You know, God, I got what I want. You know, I'll let you know if I need you. You know what makes a parent proud? When you see your kid doing the right thing. And that just, that, that makes a parent just feel like, Gosh, that I've, I've got a reason to be on this earth. I was reading a book by a famous preacher this week from England. His name's Charles Haddon Spurgeon. You've probably heard him quoted an awful lot. Most, a lot of, lot of people think he's the greatest preacher who ever lived. And if you read his sermons, man, it's just out of this world. He, he quoted this verse right here in Judges 5.23. It says, Curse Maraz. Maraz was a city near Israel. He says, curse Maraz, said the angel of the Lord. Curse its people bitterly. You know what those people at Maraz did? What, what in the world did they do for God to say, curse, curse them bitterly? You know what they did? Nothing. That's exactly what they did. They did nothing. That's what they did. When, when God's people needed them, they did nothing. It's all the worst thing you can do, y'all, is to hear this word and do nothing with it. To hear about the glorious gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and do nothing with it. You know, God said, I wish people were either hot or cold because then I could do something with them. But when they just shrug their shoulders, and I, I'll, maybe I'll do something about that someday. See, the worst thing you can do is to hear about the love of God and do nothing with it. Look in verse 9. In closing, he says, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. See, the only thing you have to do to get saved is to let God love you. That's all. 
Just receive it. Don't push it away. You know, open your heart to him. He says, for by grace you have been saved through faith. He says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Whosoever believes in him will be saved. So you've got to believe it. Just accept it. You don't get any credit for taking a gift. No, that's ridiculous. You just take it. Not something you do, it's something he did. So just stay. If you just stay in his love, he'll start working on you. He'll start changing you. You'll start finding that abundant life that Jesus said he came here to give us. You know, he said, you find it when you lose your life, though. It's a crazy, paradoxical truth. See, we don't find the real happiness by looking for it. We find real happiness by looking to him and letting him live his life through us, staying focused on him. See, just let God love you. Stay in his love. Just hang with him and, when, and move with him when he moves and stop when he stops and, and just, just stay there with him. For anybody who's listening, God, we just invite you. Just open your heart to Jesus Christ. You don't have to understand everything. Just believe him. Just believe that he died on a cross and that death on the cross takes care of your sin. God will do an eternal transaction with you right here, right now. Anybody. For all of eternity, y'all. He, he loves you with a love that you just cannot imagine. That he would love us that much. But he does. So just open your heart to him. So as we bring our service to a close and we want to thank our friends online for joining us and they may see it two or three weeks from now or whatever. We just thank you for watching. Thank you for sharing these things. And for anyone here today, y'all, if you want to do some business with God, just do it right there where you're seated. Just, just do business with God. All you got to do is get real with Him. That's all. Just get real. Get honest with him. Just say, say, God, here I am. Lord, I'm yours. Whatever you want, I'm yours. Let me tell you this. Where you can trust him. He is so gentle. Y'all, God is so gentle. So merciful. So tenderly compassionate. Y'all, he won't just dump a whole bunch of stuff on you. you. He won't make your life miserable. Anything he takes out of your life is for your good. Anything he adds to your life is for your good. You can trust him. He's a good, good father. So, uh, uh, Roosevelt going to lead us in a song of meditation. Y'all, let's just... Let's just get real with God. Let me know you are near. Let's sing this. Draw me close to you, Lord. Let it be a prayer. Draw me close to you. To hear you say that I'm your friend You are my desire Nothing else will do Cause not 
Nothing else can take your place to feel the warmth of your embrace. Help me find a way, bring me back to you. Just ask God just to bring you back. You're all I want You're all I've ever needed You're all I want Let me know you are near You're all I want You